Good evening, students, parents, guardians, and everyone else joining us tonight from all across Halton region and beyond. My name is Mark Dooley, and I am proud to serve as a master of ceremonies for this evening's iSTEM Open House. Before we begin our presentation, we would like to take a moment to honor the land and territory where we are gathering today. Halton as we know it today is rich in history and modern traditions of many First Nations and the Métis. From the Anishinaabe to the Attawandron, the Haudenosaunee and the Métis, these lands surrounding the Great Lakes are steeped in Indigenous history. As we gather today on these treaty lands, we have the responsibility to honour and respect the four directions, land, waters, plants, animals, ancestors that walk before us, and all of the wonderful elements of creation that exist. We would like to acknowledge and thank the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation for sharing their traditional territory with us. I would like to introduce some of the staff members who work in the iSTEM program and who will be presenting this evening. The iSTEM program is founded at Aldershot High School in Burlington, and we are joined tonight by the school's principal, Ms. Rebecca Newcomb, and the school's vice principal, Mr. Paul Dawson. A second location for the iSTEM program will be coming this September at Elsie McGill Secondary School in Milton. As I said earlier, my name is Mark Dooley, and I'm proud to be the founding principal of Elsie McGill, and then to be working with our vice principal, Ms. Louisa Botello. We are pleased to be joined this evening by the iSTEM lead teachers at Aldershot High School. Ms. Carrie Sagar and Mr. Jamie Mitchell have been with the program since it began three years ago. Mr. Mohamed Zia is also with us this evening and he is looking forward to bringing the exciting program to Elsie McGill Secondary School. We're proud to also have two of the HDSB superintendents of ed education responsible for the creation of the iSTEM program with us this evening. Ms. Terry Blackwell and Ms. Jacqueline Newton. The iSTEM program is grateful to the HDSB Board of Trustees for supporting its creation. I would like to spotlight the HDSB trustees who represent the schools where the iSTEM programs are located. Ms. Leah Reynolds is the trustee for Aldershot and Ms. Heather Garretts is the trustee for Elsie McGill. If you are watching live, you can submit a question for us through the form linked on the HDSB website. The form is also pinned at the top of the HDSB Facebook and Twitter pages. We will endeavor to answer as many of these questions as we can after our presentation this evening. And now I will turn things over to Mrs. Rebecca Newcomb. Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca Newcomb, the principal of Aldershot, and we are so pleased that you've joined us this evening. The best way to understand this amazing program is to see our students in action. Here's a video that shows you what you can expect from the grade nine iSTEM program. iSTEM is the fact that we get to do group projects with others that are interested in what we're doing. So we get to come together as a group and think about what we want to do, how we want to achieve it, and use different strategies that we have learned to complete it effectively. Since everybody chose to be in this program and everyone is passionate about what we're learning, everybody wants to help and wants to do as much as they can get like different perspectives and stuff like you might like be thinking a certain way but like everyone else is thinking differently so you get to see like uh different opinions and stuff the design challenge they're participating in is actually the one my first year students participate in uh, and it's uh, it involves inviting a local person a client into the classroom for whom the students design and this year we had uh, a woman who was actually a mature student at McMaster University with uh, primary generalized dystonia. And their job, my students' job, and uh, the students I think here at uh, iSTEM are essentially tasked with designing something uh, that could help her with some of the, uh, the movement dis uh, problems she has due to the dystonia. The 
because the four subjects that are math, science, tech, and geography are so correlated, you have the opportunity to solve a number of different problems in a variety of your own ways. You learn more, and when you're older and want to become an engineer, you have to have all four subjects anyways, so it's preparing you for our futures more. Companies are looking for people to be placed in roles where people really are needed, uh, and one of those areas is in solving complex, open-ended, and unstructured problems. The project the students are doing here, or did here with the iSTEM, is a good first step in starting to learn how to deal with those complex, open-ended human problems. We get to look at real-world issues like our Ravine project. It's not something that we would have done in a normal high school scene. The Ravine project is there's basically a ravine behind the school, and uh, the problem is it's eroding at an unnatural rate, so it's eroding a bit too fast. The ecosystems are really not doing well because of the erosion. All the roots are exposed, the trees are falling down, it's just not even looking nice, and the pollution that kids throw back there. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the solution to the erosion problem, so we're trying to make it erode slower at a, at a more natural rate. There isn't a fixed answer, there isn't a right answer at the end. Uh, they need to make their way through a lot of uncertainty and amb ambiguity, and there is plenty of room for failure through a project like this. I think my favorite part would have to be our model rocket project. Um, at the start of the year, we started looking at prototyping, so we started by making paper rockets, then we worked our way up to bottle rockets, and then we did a combustion rocket. We did learn the tech behind it, the chemistry behind it. And I liked it because it wasn't just sitting in a classroom learning, it was that opportunity, and I find it much easier to learn things when it has a purpose. I think the most important piece of advice that I could give a future iSTEM student is you have to be passionate about these STEM subjects, and you have to be able to see a future for yourself with a STEM-related job or profession, because if you're in this program, it will be your future. So tonight you'll learn more about how students will work together and learn within our classrooms and with our community partners. In addition, you'll hear more about the application process. We're so excited to have our grade eight students with us tonight to learn more about what the program can offer them. We're also very pleased that the program is now going to be offered at two schools, Aldershot in Burlington and Elsie McGill in Milton. We're doing school differently. It's not about memorizing and regurgitating facts. It's not only about STEM, it's about solving complex, relevant, and engaging problems. The I is all about innovation and how we innovate through STEM. We don't know where the world will be in five years, but we're preparing our students to be creative, critical thinkers, collaborative problem solvers, and change agents in the STEM fields. So what, what excites us about this program and what's helped make it a, a, the, the success that it is, is we have a group of development and advisory partners that we, we work with on a regular basis and helped in the development of the program. So we didn't do this in isolation. We wanted to understand uh, how we can best prepare students for the future. So we engaged in lots of dialogue and conversations and opportunities to connect with folks from McMaster University, Mohawk College, Engineers of Tomorrow, TechLink, Let's Talk Science, ICTC, and I think um, one of our, our earlier uh, connections was also with the Canada, the organization Canada 2067, which is a national organization that looks at uh, education and, and uh, the engagement with science moving forward through education and how we can best prepare students. So a lot of these advisory partners continue to be with us today. We meet with them uh, on, on a regular basis and continue to get feedback, not just in the initial development of the program, but as we continue to, the program continues to grow and we continue to uh, come up with new ideas and new ways of thinking in, in working with these partners. When we spoke to all of our department development partners, we continue to connect with our advisory uh, uh, partners. We said, what skills will students need in the future? How do we best prepare them for that future that we don't know what it holds yet, but we wanna prepare them as best as we can. So you can see there 
some of the skills and ideas that, that we've been working on. Um, critical thinking and problem solving. We want to be able to provide students with an opportunity to face challenges, face problems, and develop the skills to work through them and come up with solutions. Being innovative, creative, and having that entrepreneurial spirit. Maybe not necessarily in that business sense always, but having that sense of, how I have an idea, I have something to contribute, and how do I get that out there and, and make it bigger than just myself? Looking at collaboration, you're going to see later on in the presentation and other comments about collaboration. It is a huge component to the program here. Giving students opportunities to collaborate with one another, with different members of the staff, with different teachers, um, as well as our different community uh, partners and different organizations that we're working with to solve these, these open-ended human-centered design problems as we work through, through the program with the students. Being self-directed, there is lots of opportunity for student voice uh, through the program and being able to contribute to that. Being a citizen, that sense of citizenship, again, contributing to something that's bigger than them locally or beyond, and communication. That's been one of the biggest things that we've learned from, from our partners as well, is that students uh, and young people have fantastic ideas, but being able to get those ideas out to others and communicating them in a really great way is, is one of the big skills that we're, we're working on. And you'll see that reflected in the roadmap. Uh, some key insights from the Canada 2067 organization that we took and have implemented into the program. Personalized learning. So again, giving students choice, using their interests and passions as we, as we do this work with them. Student collaboration, you're gonna see lots of it and that is a cornerstone of the program and helps it be, uh, be as successful as it is. Uh, technology in the classroom. So we want students to have not just the, the critical thinking and theoretical skills, but the tangible hands-on technology skills. And behind me, you can see, we've got one of our 3D printers here. I'm also in a room with our laser cutter. We have multiple 3D printers around the building, different devices, hand tools, technology. It, it fills the learning each and every day, regardless of what subject the students are working in. We want to engage students in that science, tech, engineering, and mathematical learning throughout the, the program. And you'll see in the grade nine year, there's a heavy focus with that. And we transition to different skills as well in, in grade uh, 10, 11, and 12. Experiential learning, you'll see some stuff where we're out with McMaster students. We're with working with the city of Burlington. It's really providing students with that experiential learning and authentic learning experiences that help make this program. And I mean, when we work with our partners, we say, um, you know, these ideas, these, these solutions that students are coming up with, are they, are they really tangible? And they're like, yeah, these are totally, totally great ideas that students are coming up with that first year engineering students would be working on or, or city planners. So it, it's fantastic. Uh, mentorship with our staff, uh, with students working with other organizations like Engineers of Tomorrow. So it's not just about uh, uh, learning in the classroom, it's about that mentorship as well. Uh, being critical thinkers and problem solvers. There's a heavy emphasis on project-based learning, design thinking. So again, providing opportunities for students to develop those skills being aware of, of where they are and, and their interests and their passions. Uh, there's a lot of equity work as well done through this program, which is fantastic. Uh, student well-being and having comfortable spaces. So there's been a, a great investment in, in, in Aldershot School and Elsie McGill is building a brand new facility or continuing to build a brand new facility. So we know that the learning environment itself plays a huge role in helping students uh, meet with success and providing them with authentic learning opportunities through this program. So when we think about preparing students for the workforce and, and, and post-secondary opportunities, there's some key factors there that we think about right now for our students. One being that technological change and disruption. The world is changing, technology is evolving. We want our students to have the skills to be able to navigate that world and navigate those changes and be leaders in, that, in those areas. Shifting demographics, the world continues to change through technology and, and, and other aspects of life. Students are able to interact with different people in different ways, and we want them to have the skills to be able to, uh, to navigate those areas. And accelerating globalization. Again, if we've learned anything over the last few years, technology plays a huge part in our ability to connect with people, uh, not just within the school, but, but within the school community and beyond. And we think about those highly skilled people, those highly skilled young people entering uh, the workforce, developing partnerships local uh, and, and beyond, and having leadership opportunities there experiential learning, developing skills and competencies, and having um, a roadmap or an opportunity to explore multiple career paths, um, whether it's within uh, you know, a specific STEM field or beyond, those are, are ways and things we're looking at 
through this program and developing our students and giving them, we think, one of the best opportunities to move forward in their post-secondary lives. And I get to uh, do some speaking about the Aldershot uh, learning environments and the resources that we have uh, currently at my school. And I'm sitting in one of our iSTEM classrooms. You can see we've got some fancy art on the ceiling behind me. I, I love this space personally because we've got windows that look out onto the school so people can look out, but also people can look in and, and see the interesting things that students are working on in these spaces. Um, at Aldershot, we do have uh, two rooms that have been renovated to be um, quote unquote innovation rooms or thinking rooms. Um, they have wall to wall whiteboards where student thinking is always hitting the walls. Um, we might ask students to, to think about what a, a project might look like in here. Um, and then we'd ask them to throw together a really quick prototype out of, uh, you know, discarded cardboard or, or various um, crafting supplies we might have in the room. Um, but then kids are, are starting to iterate on those prototypes when they get some feedback and they're making more and more refined work as we go. Um, and they really do that with the various resources that we have access to. So Mr. Dawson mentioned our laser cutter, our 3D printer in my room right now. Um, my 3D printer is going um, as I'm speaking and it's printing off some gears for a student project. Um, and so we could have, in theory, a, a student come up with something on the boards and then turn around and throw it into a computer program and then 3D print it and, and have their work ready to incorporate into their design tomorrow. Um, we've got a full suite of science sensors. So also sitting on my shelves right now are some uh, water sensors to measure how polluted a, a sample of water is. And um, I'll show you in a minute some of the work we've been doing with students to create and design uh, water filters that can clean the water. We have uh, really beautifully outfitted tech classrooms here um, with all the hand tools you need. But more than that, they're just really wide open spaces that um, give students a, a chance to dream and think about ways to uh, really change the future. That's really what we're trying to arm students with the skills to do. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that all of the rooms at Aldershot are outfitted with uh, whiteboards now. So the, the cool pedagogy that we're doing in, in our ISTEM classes have has trickled out and is being incorporated into all our, our subject areas here at the school. So um, we're just excited to keep moving with that. Uh, I'm going to throw it over to uh, Muhammad now to talk about what's coming for Elsie McGill. Thank you so much, Jamie. So uh, Elsie McGill is our brand new building in Halton. It's got the ISTEM program starting up in September 2022. Uh, I'm just going to give you again a quick tour, just like uh, Jamie did for uh, Aldershot, just a quick tour of the learning environment and the resources that we have. Uh, so the classrooms at LC McGill have been uh, intentionally designed to be creative and promote and encourage collaboration among students. So uh, just to give you an example of that, if you look at that top left image, uh, that really wide open space, uh, that's actually a collab space that's centered around six uh, classrooms. There's three on the left and three on the right. Uh, and those classrooms have uh, glass walls on them. And the cool thing is you can actually write on those glass walls and they're erasable. Uh, and so, so what can happen is students can actually come out in small groups into that collab space and work independently while they're still under teacher supervision. Uh, and so uh, just again, you know, emphasizing collaboration and critical thinking just, and the student teacher can kind of overlook that process. Uh, another space, another really cool space is our library commons area, which faces the main hallway. And uh, that space is also designed to encourage collaboration uh, creative thinking, all of those highly transferable skills that uh, students need in post-secondary and, of course, into the workplace. Uh, if you look at the bottom center image, uh, it's a science classroom. I hang out in a science room all the time, and so that's actually where uh, we've got, you can kind of see, you know, the cabinets around the room, uh, the lab benches there, they'll have gas lines, water lines, and uh, all sorts of other cool things. Uh, but uh, we've actually got eight of those rooms in this building, which is more than other schools in Halton. Uh, and the reason for that is to be able to support the STEM work that's going to happen in and around the building. And finally, we've actually got tons of uh, high-tech equipment. So if you look at the bottom right, uh, all wrapped up nicely is a CNC milling machine. Uh, these things are uh, super useful, especially for when students are designing 
uh, prototypes and they're going to go test those prototypes. So it's just going to make that process very easy. Uh, and uh, there you have it, a quick tour of Elsie McGill. I will pass it off to Kerry. Thank you. Great, thanks. So I stem both at Aldershot and Elsie McGill. Uh, next year really will be about learning differently. So students, uh, hi students, uh, in grade nine, you will be doing your engineering year and working on big projects. So design thinking projects or human centered design projects where you'll have opportunities to sit in first year university lectures or to meet with community partners. Our grade nines right now are working on a new local issue around water. So the last two weeks we have been literally outside uh, analyzing water and water ways and water runoff uh, with the Bay Area Restoration Council and the City of Burlington. And uh, tomorrow we're gonna ask our grade nines to come up with a solution to the water quality in the Bay. So all the time, ISTEM students are being given real world problems and trying to solve those problems um, through the subjects that they're taking. So in grade nine, it's geography, science, math, and tech. Um, and I think it will be the same at LC McGill. So it's really about learning in different ways. And I think, yeah, the next slide, it's also about thematic pro projects. So what are you passionate about and how can you take your passion for STEM subjects and apply it to your learning. So all the courses are integrated. So really you don't know if you're in math or geography some days, you just know that you're working on iSTEM projects, but throughout the course, or throughout the iSTEM program, you are learning the core skills you need for each of your subjects. I just wanted to add a little bit more about the evolution of student work that we're starting to see. Uh, our first class that started a few years ago is now in grade 11 and um, when when COVID happened and they interrupted their learning in that first year they had just started a water filter project and that's what you can see on the left hand side underneath the word then uh, the very first water filter project they tried it was really rough they were using two plastic water bottles that they had smushed together and they're trying to clean the water and so with our grade 11s this year we decided to pick up that project basically where we left off and now that we're starting to get some work submitted, it's really interesting to me and to the other teachers to see not only how the projects have evolved um, as far as complexity and, and skill level to complete the projects, um, but also how the students have grown with it. And like I haven't often come across such articulate and thoughtful students as I am um, the ones that I'm working with now, but you can see these are um, three 3D printed water filters that the students have made that are really clever. They slide together, um, they have some moving parts. And then the one I saw today that I was really impressed with was PVC pipe that had a filter packed into the middle that the student could kind of like turn upside down and shake and it would filter the water. Um, and I was just blown away at how innovative and interesting that solution was. And, and so I, I know we're gonna get blown away again next year when these kids get into grade 12. Go on, Carrie now. Yeah, for, for iSTEM, um, it is a four year program. So you start in grade nine and you continue it for the four years. You take 13 courses that are iSTEM uh, courses and you graduate with an iSTEM certificate. It is open to students of all path in all pathways. And we know with grade nine math is now de-streamed. So we were de-streaming before de-streaming was a thing and we'll continue to do that. It is a regional program, so it'll be offered at two locations, but is open to all Halton students, or if we have students from Hamilton or other areas, it is open for non-HDSB students to apply to. In grade nine and 10, the emphasis is really on local issues. So you do engineering in grade nine, entrepreneurship in grade 10 with a local focus. When you get into grade 11 and 12, um, it really turns to looking at the UN Sustainable Development Goals and students working to come up with solutions to one of those UN goals and the, the culminating year when they choose a specialty, they are trying to address and present to community their solution to a UN goal. I'm gonna talk in a little bit more detail about each grade um, as we go. 
So uh, the year one uh, roadmap, as we call it, is, is very much about the engineering year and building the skills of an engineer. Uh, and so right away, uh, students start prototyping and receiving and giving feedback to each other about the prototypes that everybody's building uh, and then iterating on those prototypes to always make them slightly better. Um, we start the year with probably my favorite project, which is the rocket project. Uh, we take students from these really simple straw rockets um, to some more sophisticated bottle rockets that are powered with air pressure. And then we finalize with uh, combustion rockets. And, um, you know, they use a kit to make these combustion rockets. But the neat thing is we take the fins that come in these kits and we throw those fins away and we have students design their own fins then, and they try and make them the rocket better. Um, but by the end of the year uh, in grade nine, students will have worked for us at Aldershot with McMaster University in the first year engineering program. They will have done a design thinking project with the McMaster engineers. Um, and then they will have taken that learning and gone down their own road with respect to innovation and create their own design thinking project that addresses something they're passionate about. Um, I believe I just heard from uh, Mr. Dooley that there may be a, a partnership in the works for um, Elsie McGill and the University of Guelph, but, and he can interrupt me and shout at me if I've said something wrong, but I don't think I have. Um, year two, uh, what, our first year doing year two was exciting last year. That was the entrepreneurship year. Um, the beginning of that year is a focus on the local community and trying to give back. And so both schools will be working in partnership with the Youth Philanthropy Initiative, which is a really cool initiative that asks students to seek out um, social issues in their own backyard, in their own community. Um, it asks them to find a charity that addresses those issues. And then they have to pitch to a panel of international judges um, which charity uh, is the most deserving of a $5,000 donation. And at the end of that process, um, the Youth Philanthropy Initiative donates $5,000 to that local charity on behalf of the school and on behalf of the students. Um, by the end of their second year in iSTEM, most students will have started their own business. Um, again, we tried this for the first time last year, didn't know how it was going to go. And I think uh, we were pleasantly surprised um, some students by the end of our, our time with them had launched a business. They were making their own money from their business. And the best part about this project is that uh, a handful of groups continued on with their, with their business and with their work after the semester was over and after their, their learning was over. Um, moving into year three, we have our um, uh, IDC course, idc for u which is an interdisciplinary study course. It is a, a grade 12 level university course. We've picked that intentionally so that students can use that credit as one of their hopefully top six courses when they apply to post-secondary. Um, the global innovation course, as we've called it, focuses on um, the scientific method, collecting data, um, technology for uh, social change, but also ethically sustainable technology. And then a big focus is on leadership and leading. Um, students in that class right now, today, were um, testing their water filters that they had designed from scratch. Uh, but by the end of the year, students will have researched uh, a UN Sustainable Development Goal. They will have picked one or two goals that they're passionate about, partnered with some colleagues in their class, and worked with community partners to solve that goal on a global scale. And they'll pitch their ideas in what we hope will be like a TED style talk uh, with some multimedia hopefully, fingers crossed, to a live audience. Um, when the students in iSTEM reach grade 12, we're asking them to pick a specialization. They can pick one or more. Um, currently at Aldershot, we're offering uh, one for each letter of iSTEM. So we're offering an innovation uh, specialization that focuses on world issues and data management. Um, the science specialization we're calling uh, biochemistry. It'll be biology and chemistry. Math is going to focus on physics and calculus. Uh, there's a, a technology specialization that will look at um, computer science and computer engineering together, and it'll probably have a robotics focus. We're calling that mechatronics. And then finally, uh, we have uh, engineering specialization that's going to pair architecture with a mathematics course. Um, and all these specializations will be great for students entering any pathway post-secondary, be it university, uh, the trades, apprenticeship, or college. Um, 
LSD McGill will likely have uh, slightly different specializations. We don't know what that's going to look like. They're going to grow into that. And, you know, I'm excited to see what they come up with. So I think I'm going to pass it over to Carrie now. Right. So we're, we're going to show you a video. Ideally, COVID, COVID hasn't helped um, us in terms of promoting the program because really, ideally, we'd love to have future iSTEMers at the schools visiting, hearing from students and uh, seeing with their own eyes what iSTEM is. But we have had a student make a video that in his, uh, Hudson Bulldog has made the video talking about his experience with iSTEM. So we're going to play that for you. Hello, I'm Hudson, and I'm here to tell you why you should choose iSTEM. Well, let me give you a few good reasons. First, you get to specialize in the field of your interest. This allows you to choose an innovative idea that you want to find out more about. For example, when I was asked to do and complete a project last year, I got the choice of something innovative that was current and interesting to me. I built a drone that would bring medical equipment to people quickly. Second, you get hands-on experience. I have the opportunity to visit McMaster campus and sit on lectures. I also have the opportunity to build stuff, real stuff, using technology and other different types of materials. Learning in the classroom is important, but hands-on learning that gives us an opportunity to contribute to the community is also essential. Third, you get to learn about things you actually use in your life, and the types of things you will learn will be so broad from learning about how you can help the environment to building a rocket you actually get to test. Four, iSTEM offers fully integrated projects. For example, we worked on a ravine erosion project. This entitled actual going into the ravine and trying to figure out with your group members how to stop erosion. How cool is that? And what is even cooler about this and all our projects is that it integrates all four iSTEM courses. This means for this project, we used geography skills to look at environmental issues, math skills for calculating slope, science skills for analyzing plants, and tech skills to develop a system that would stop the erosion. Another really awesome thing about this is that students have access to all the knowledge of all four teachers to complete one project. This may not seem great to you, but let me tell you, this is so beneficial. I should also add that teachers are super helpful, always available and happy to answer questions, and always ready for a good discussion. So I've given you some good reasons to choose iSTEM. But for me, the most important reason I love being a part of the iSTEM program is that I get to try and solve problems, real problems, whether that be economic, social, or environmental problems. Last year, I went to McMaster to learn about a student who was suffering from a nervous system issue called dystonia. We were then tasked with the goal to design and build something that could help her in everyday life. My group developed two ideas. The first we called the super spoon. This was built to help the patient eat using utensils without spilling her food. The second was a prototype of a robot that could move and bring her laundry up and down the stairs. I also want to tell you about how each school year is focused on a different school that will provide you with necessary tools to become a global thinker. In grade nine, you'll focus on engineering. What does this mean? This means you will learn innovative skills related to engineering and design thinking. These skills combine with the opportunity to solve real world problems will teach you to become more creative, a critical thinker, and understand how to manage a project from beginning to end. In grade 10, you'll focus on entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurial thinking is important if you want your new scientific ideas to turn into reality. Through project learning, you'll take an idea, pitch it, recruit others to join, or join in if you, are, if you like their ideas, and then develop it. In grade 11 and 12, you will explore, develop, and implant solutions to social, economic, or environmental global issues, always keeping in mind the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals. Okay, so last year, I'll talk about the elephant in the room, social distancing and quad masters. Well, the other thing that has changed is that we can't all congregate together while working. Projects are still integrated. We get directions from all four teachers, our entire iSTEM year gets together via Google Meet. We work in groups online with different cohorts, and we still present our projects in innovative ways. So even though all of these challenges, the iSTEM program stays true to its core objective, preparing us for our innovative futures. Thank you. That's um, so, so great. And he, he likes the program so much that he convinced his sister to join. So his sister's now in grade nine iSTEM. So. That's exciting. So the next slide is the one all future iSTEMs are waiting for, and it's really about the application process. So the application process. 
Well, the application process will open. Uh, the applications will be open tomorrow morning, bright and early, and students will be able to go on HDSB. Um, if you Google iSTEM, the application will come up. And we're asking you for three questions. So you have to answer what excites you about innovation, science, technology, engineering, and math. Describe your personal learning goals and reasons for wanting to be part of the iSTEM program. And what is one problem you would like to solve or one big question you would like to explore as part of your learning in the iSTEM program? Really, we are looking for students who have natural curiosity and want to be change agents. So take what you're really passionate about in iSTEM and use that to answer those questions. Like we've had students that have talked about, um, hockey players who have talked about uh, concussions and wanting to change how students, uh, to prevent concussions by redesigning helmets. Or we've had students that are in environmental uh, activists and want to take uh, an environmental idea and apply it using science. So if you've done a science project, uh, been part of a science fair, and you want to dive deeper into something in science, use that information that you have to try and answer those questions. In the application, if you are new to HDSB, you will be asked to upload a copy of your grade seven report card and a copy of your grade eight report uh, progress report. If you are an HDSB student at present, we will that those reports will automatically be uploaded for you. Um, one trick or tip that students uh, we struggled a bit with last year is in the application process. Once a student completes the application, a parent or guardian must approve it um, in order for it to be complete. So a couple students they had applied, but parents hadn't signed off on it. So you need to make sure that. Once students finish the application, that a guard, parent or guardian um, clicks to approve it. And the other thing you'll be asked to do is course selection. And Carolyn Zizzo is our head of guidance at Aldershot. And she's gonna walk you through what you need to put on there because we know you, in your grade eight classes, you haven't really talked about this yet. So I'm gonna turn it over to Carolyn. Yeah, thank you, Carrie. Um, yeah, I'm here to speak for a few quick minutes about the course selection por portion of the iSTEM application. Um, so just a couple of notes uh, from, from the guidance department on that end. Uh, students will be asked to select their grade nine courses within the iSTEM application. Uh, if you are a current HDSB student, you will also be completing course selection for your home high school prior to finding out if you've been accepted to iSTEM. Um, this is uh, the process we've followed for the last um, three years, uh, and we will continue to do so. Um, when you do accept an offer uh, to the program, uh, the course selection that you made within the application is, is the set of selection uh, that will be used um, to be put into our system to be able to create your timetable uh, for, for grade nine. Um, However, uh, if, you've, if you are in HDSB and you have made selections in my blueprint, uh, my blueprint will continue to display the courses chosen from your home high school uh, until the start of the school year. Um, and this would go for if you are from another board and happen to be using my blueprint as the vessel for course selection, um, but HDSB students uh, all use it. And so um, there was a little bit of confusion around that. Um, it, does, it doesn't happen automatically. The two systems don't talk to one another um, until the start of the school year. Uh, so um, just wanted to make a note about that for everybody. Um, I have provided here, along with my counterpart at Elsie McGill, a couple of resources um, for uh, you to um, look at at your leisure. These slides will be available on the website um, and accessible after the presentation. Um, we have come up with an Aldershot School course selection worksheet for iSTEM and uh, an Elsie McGill one as well. Um, so uh, we're hoping that this will be useful for you in terms of um, some tips uh, around different courses um, and uh, 
uh, how to make the best course selection decisions. Uh, you can also refer to the link uh, HDSB Guide to Secondary um, and also uh, the Transitioning to High School section of the HDSB website are two very useful links for students coming uh, into grade nine from grade eight. Uh, I would also encourage your students um, and, and you families to reach out to grade eight teachers, um, student success teachers in the grade eight um, uh, schools. Uh, they can certainly also help with any questions you may have, or you can always reach out to us um, at each of the schools. Uh, and I think that's it for me. I'm going to hand it over back to Mark. Thank you to all the ISTEM staff and students who have shared with us this evening. Uh, in addition to the information presented this evening, you can learn more about the program through visiting the ISTEM page at the HDSB website, which has a frequently asked questions section. Uh, you can follow the program on Instagram or Twitter, and the handle is there. Uh, or you can email with a specific question to istam at hdsb.ca. If you're watching live, you can still submit a question, question for us through the form linked on the HDSB website. The form is also pinned at the top of the HDSB Facebook and Twitter pages. Uh, we will try and answer as many questions as we can this evening, uh, and we will focus our questions on those that have a broad audience. The first question is, is there a cap for the program? Would everyone who applied get selected? If not, how, what do we need to do to get selected? I'm going to ask Carrie Sagar to answer that question, please. Okay, well, there, there is a cap. Um, and so your application does matter. Those three questions that you're asked to answer really do count. We have a whole team of educators, not just teachers, but community members that read through your applications. So take your time on answering those questions. Um, your reports do matter as well, but we're not looking for the A++ student. We're looking for students who have great learning skills, who um, show the ability to learn and apply their learning in different ways. So there will be a cap, but um, your application counts too. Thank you, Carrie. Next question is going to Jamie Mitchell. Uh, since these courses are integrated, how are subjects like math uh, evaluated? Uh, specifically thinking about a few years from now when students are applying for universities uh, and math being fun functions and calculus are prerequisites for most engineering or computer science uh, programs. Yeah, the integrated piece of these courses is a, a lot of fun for me as the math guy. Um, so we, uh, we are right now typically having about uh, two or three kind of dedicated math lessons uh, per week where kids are working on the boards, they're uh, crunching the numbers, they're solving the problems that we're asking them to solve. Um, and then, you know, two or three days a week uh, where they're working on their projects. But um, as, you know, the teachers are experts in the subject, we're teasing out the curriculum uh, that exists in their in their project. So uh, one quick example I can give of what that looks like. Um, kids were learning about runoff and watersheds and, um, you know, all the creeks and rivers that feed into the Hamilton Harbor. Uh, but we took our math students outside. In fact, we took all the ISTEM students outside and we taught them how to measure the area of a certain plot of land, uh, examine land to figure out how much runoff would be or how much rainwater would be absorbed into the ground and how much would be turned into runoff. And then we, we calculated um, how much runoff exists in the Aldershot property um, per year, which was a, a pretty, pretty cool experiment. Um, as far as evaluations go, uh, we're working on a big portfolio project where throughout the four years of ISTEM students are uh, creating their portfolio, not just of the projects that, that they do and the work they complete on the projects, but also a portfolio of their learning. So highlighting what they've learned in math and science and geography, all their subjects. Um, and, and that's kind of our big piece of evaluation. We're really uh, de-emphasizing the importance of, of tests um, because, uh, you know, students can study for a test and they'll know that information in the moment, but it doesn't often carry forward into the future. Whereas this work they're doing in their projects and their portfolios really sticks with them for a long time after that. So that's kind of the path we're taking here. Thank you, Jamie. Next question is going to Superintendent Newton. Can a student living in Waterdown 
or outside of the Halton District School Board apply for this program? Yes, that's the short answer. Um, we welcome all students from all uh, school systems in Ontario, whether they be private um, or the Catholic Board or live outside of the Halton region. The tricky part is, is that you are responsible for transportation. So if you have a way to get to the school for four years, at either school, then um, by all means, you are most welcome uh, into our program. Thank you for that. Next question is going to Superintendent Blackwell. Regarding the application process, are we required to select either location, Elsie McGill or Aldershot High School? Is it one application to both locations, and it will be dependent on the number of applications, or do we select the program we want to apply to? Uh, thank you for the question and submitting that question. It's a good one. Um, we have had lots of discussion on this and the logistics in terms of uh, looking at selection of students and also uh, the timelines around providing acceptance because we know that uh, students need that information fairly quickly. Uh, the short answer or long answer is that uh, we ask you to apply to uh, one of the programs. Uh, and we recognize we have not said, you know, if you're in the south area, you need to apply to Aldershot. We realize that families have different uh, abilities or capabilities of, of accessing transportation if it's not uh, within their homeschool region. Uh, so we're being very flexible with that piece. Thank you for that. Next question is going to Paul Dawson. And it's in regard to students with special education needs. Uh, specifically, if they're not in the Halton District School Board, uh, if their individual education plan would carry forward into this program. Thanks, Mark. That's a great question. Uh, for students that transition from one school board to the next, their IEP doesn't typically automatically carry over. So if you're coming from the Hamilton Wentworth District School Board and transitioning to Aldershot with us or with LSE McGill into the Halton District School Board, your IEP doesn't automatically come over. However, we uh, gather a lot of that information through our transition meetings and encourage families uh, to identify that on the application. There is an opportunity on the application to identify if you have an IEP so that we can then do that additional follow-up when a student transitions to us from outside of board. This year, we've had a number of students from outside of our school board who had IEPs at their previous school or their previous school board. And we, uh, we've been continuing to work with, with students and their families to uh, reinstitute an IEP, an individual education plan, here in our school board. So, <coughs> excuse me, those supports exist. We still work through the IEP and provide that support through accommodations and that with the student. There's just uh, an additional part of, of having that uh, kind of initial conversation to reestablish that if you transition from outside of Halton to our board, but 100% we work through that process with families. Thank you, Paul. Next question is going to Mohammed Zia. Uh, what other careers besides engineering does the iSTEM program prepare students for? Uh, that's a wonderful question because uh, the iSTEM program, we're looking at solving real world problems and that's really that are human centered. And uh, that's really the, the framework of the program. So when students do work their way through the four years, uh, they have so many options that interest them. It may be engineering, which the program prepares students for, of course. And of course, there, there are so many other fields like, um, you know, the sciences as well, because you've got biomedical engineering within the sciences. Uh, you can go into a, uh, you know, uh, more of a hands-on field, perhaps tech, uh, that's related to technology, where uh, you may be working with, uh, like, you know, cars or like the automotive programs. Uh, so it's it, this program really does uh, uh, builds up your competency, competency skills, those 21st century skills that are going to be highly transferable into post-secondary. And so it's going to prepare students for really the workplace as well. And I would say prepare, it, it's a great program for really anything, um, but very focused heavily on sci this, you know, the sciences and uh, engineering portion. Thanks, Mohammed. Next question is going to Carrie. Uh, is in regards to the workload in the program. So mostly open-ended questions, homework, uh, is it lots of little projects or big projects, a mixture? 
probably all all of the above. So there is a workload. I mean, it's it's an iSTEM program. So and and students are coming at it with natural curiosity. So they're always asking why 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 do we and want to know more. So for example, it, with the rocket project, students were just doing a project on satellites and having to do a, a pitch presentation to NASA on why their satellite should remain in space. And I know a lot of students spent a lot of time at home doing research, but did they have to? Maybe not, but they, they wanted to because they were excited about the topics. And we find that a lot with, with all of the iSTEM courses that students are excited about what they're studying and so they take that learning and not just use it in the four walls of the school but they take it into other aspects of their lives so there it's high school and so it's a little bit different but um we hope that it's engaging for students and students want to learn what what they're studying thank you for that next question is going to carolyn uh when we apply can we change our application to another program? So the International Baccalaureate or Advanced Placement, or is the decision final once you apply and choose your courses? Great question. Um, it, it is a final decision. Um, we, we do line up our timelines with IB um, in terms of deadline to accept an offer. So students are more than welcome to apply to multiple programs, um, but the, the decision, whatever you choose, um, we like it to be final. Um, that helps schools plan um, for the students that are coming. Thank you for that. Uh, next question I'm gonna to give to Mohammed. Uh, and it is that uh, the focus of the presentation this evening seemed to be about Aldershot. Uh, wondering if uh, you could talk briefly about what we will be doing at LC McGill uh, in, rel in relation to iSTEM. Uh, I am actually super excited about opening LC McGill because there's so many possibilities and so many cool projects and ideas that we have. And we've, we're already in discussion with our uh, department heads at the school, our program leads at the school. And so and teachers are sort of coming together in preparation for next year. Uh, and so we've already been, you know, working on projects. And uh, I feel like I could talk just uh, forever because there's just so many cool projects that we've already done. For example, we as a school went to um, our 16 mile creek to do a study of the stream and we analyze the biodiversity. And now we're coming back to our classes to uh, you know, pro figure out what problems we can solve. And so a lot of the learning that's gonna come out of that is gonna be happening within the rooms that are cross-curricular. Uh, the, the, now, if I, if I uh, say for next year, will we do that again? Uh, perhaps, and it may be even better because we're already, we've already done it once. And so I'm very excited in designing this program and looking forward to what it's gonna look like uh, when we start up. Thank you, Mohammed. Next question is for Jamie. Uh, compared to regular high school curriculum, is the subject of English less important in your program? Uh, that's a good question, um, and the answer is no, it's not. Um, a longer version of my answer would be in grade 10 iSTEM, uh, the English uh, class that all students in grade 10 take is bundled into the four credit uh, iSTEM bundle where they learn it together with civics and careers, um, science and mathematics during COVID and, and currently right now because of our timetable, we've pa paired English up with mathematics. And so students end up doing a lot of, um, uh, you know, examining how to tell stories uh, and be persuasive about the mathematics that they're learning. So the big project we did last year in English and uh, mathematics was for students to uh, create their own math podcast and they had to write a script in English research their topic, and then produce a, a podcast episode about a mathematical topic of their choice. Um, so we think it's very important, especially too, when we look at students pitching their ideas to different audiences, um, knowing how to speak to different audiences, knowing how to write uh, reports and reflections and uh, you know, documentation for different audiences. English is a very important part of our program. Thank you for that. Uh, I'll answer the next question myself, uh, being that uh, it is in regards to extracurriculars. Uh, and so the question is, uh, are students encouraged to take themselves into extracurriculars? And I can say that having worked at Aldershot last year, 
uh, and being at LC McGill now this year, the answer is a definitive yes. Uh, and in addition, uh, there are question around whether there'll be a full range of extracurriculars, clubs, sports, et cetera, at LC McGill. And again, the answer is yes. Our student population will be growing rapidly uh, and we'll have all sorts of uh, new clubs and activities for students. But certainly you would be joining a group of students who are very motivated, active, uh, and engaged in their school communities. Uh, and those students tend to very significantly take part in uh, extracurricular activities either at lunch uh, or after school if they can arrange a ride home. The next question, I'm going to send to uh, Mohammed. Is there a regular high school program at LC McGill Secondary School or is it exclusively an iSTEM school? Uh, good question. So uh, there is a regular program and uh, on top of that we've also got the iSTEM program. So uh, the our school spe well, is going to be specializing in iSTEM but uh, we do have a regular program as well. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, the next question is going to Rebecca Newcomb uh, and it says uh, will separate languages like French classes be in iSTEM? So with French, um, as in at all high schools, we'll be offering core French. So we'll be offering both the uh, applied and academic core French programming. Um, and there will be no French immersion programming available at either school. Thank you for that. Uh, next question, uh, I'm going to put this to Carolyn. Uh, I'm curious about the academics and how iSTEM students are prepared for future educational challenges at university. How this uh, program relates to uh, an IB or International Baccalaureate program. Great question. Um, uh, I can't say enough great things about the program. Um, I have have been able to meet a lot of students. Um, COVID did put a little damper on some of that face-to-face -face interaction, but of the students that have been with us now for three years, um, I can truly honestly say great, wonderful things about them and their journeys thus far. Um, because we only have students currently in grade 11, I uh, unfortunately can't provide any details yet as to uh, where they are <laughs> applying and where they are ending up uh, in post-secondary. Uh, but I'm really excited to see where they do, uh, where they do uh, continue their post-secondary journey. Um, as far as the um, IB and the AP programming, um, I'm, I, because we are not an IB or an AP school, and I've only ever worked at Aldershot, um, I, I can't speak 100% certainly. Um, I'm not sure if Jamie or Carrie or Paul or Rebecca have um, had experience in comparison uh, to those, those three programs that could shed a light on that. Carrie? I, I, I've had the opportunity uh, to teach in an IB school for, for many years and with ISTEM and I can uh, definitively say the academic rigor uh, between the two is, is equal, that our students come out um, equally as brilliant. Uh, the learning style is very different between IB and ISTEM and, and AP for that matter. IB is uh, maybe more of a traditional form of academics that people would know. And ISTEM is just a different way of learning academics, but certainly most of our ISTEM students have plans to do post-secondary and be change agents. They're gonna be doctors and lawyers and surgeons and engineers and computer scientists and coders. And they have big plans to go on into the STEM world and do big things. And, and I have zero doubt that they will be academically prepared to do that. If I could just jump in too, Carrie. Um, I distinctly remember one of our partners from post-secondary telling us that when he talks to the admissions department, he says, we don't need more 99% students in my program. What we need are students that are comfortable solving different problems and looking at things critically with like the ability to think deeply and build empathy with the problem that they're, they're studying. 
Um, and those are certainly the skills we're trying to build in the program. And, and on top of that, uh, the, uh, the program is being studied by a, a group of post-secondary institutions in the province who are looking uh, for ways to change their acceptance uh, methods to honor kind of the skill set that, that students that might come out of a program like this would bring into post-secondary. So they're looking for ways to look beyond the mark, uh, essentially. Thank you for that. Uh, next question is in relation to a word that uh, someone heard in our presentation, and that was de-streamed. Uh, Carrie, do you, could you talk briefly about what de-streamed means and what that would look like in a classroom? Sure. So that's a, it's a secondary term, and I know a lot of um, uh, parents that are new to high school don't know that. But in in high school, we have different. Um, we have an academic and applied and essential stream and I Jamie is actually all grade nine in all of Ontario is now de-streamed and Jamie's uh, doing math de-streamed. Jamie you probably can talk to it better than than I can in terms of like you you've been writing the curriculum for it. <laughs> no don't don't give me a promotion I haven't written any curriculum no um, I, I have been working on the curriculum uh, since it was released and it is it's you know it it's not me different per se than um, you know what we've done in the past. Uh, the, the big difference is we're getting rid of those two two pathways, the uh, academic pathway and the applied pathway and, and just merging into one. There's a lot of research and evidence that that showed that students that entered the applied pathway were, were kind of disadvantaged long term. And so this is how the province is trying to address that. Um, there's a there's a whole lot of good in the curriculum. Uh, they've, they've rearranged some of the expectations but I mean, at the end of the day, students are still learning math when they when they come to school and enter that de-stream program. Thank you for that. Uh, next question, I'll, I'll put back to you, Jamie, uh, and it is, uh, are there mentors available for female students in the program? Uh, it's definitely something we're working on. Um, you know, we, we do uh, make big efforts to bring in guest speakers that uh, represent all of our students and uh, you know we have we have good connections with a lot of great uh, females in the STEM field. Um, we uh, we have quite a few female teachers in the program as well that are teaching all, all the different classes um, that would act as mentors within the school. Uh, the community mentors is, is a piece that we're we're working on as we continue to build so um, we, we do have um, uh, engineers in residence, so that's a, a, a provincial program. So we have two engineers that are totally tied to our program. Now, because of COVID, they come in virtually, but uh, they do come in. And next week, for example, the grade 10s have um, university students coming in to work with them. They're fourth year physics students from Laurier and York University. And two are female, two are male, but we do try and have lots of uh, encourage females in iSTEM and females in STEM programs. Thank you for that. And just a, a point of clarification on de-streaming. Uh, it is happening in grade nine math in every high school in Ontario this year for the first time. Uh, so that is, it's not just a Halton thing, it is happening in every high school in, in, in Ontario. Uh, next question I'm gonna give to Mohammed, uh, And the question is, Will teachers at LC McGill Secondary School have experience teaching iSTEM programming before the uh, program opens in September? Um, so, in fact, so all of the LC McGill teachers are currently teaching grade nine students, and certainly their focus is uh, to design their curriculum in an iSTEM format. And so, uh, they are teaching the regular, um, uh, you know, version. Of the curriculum, if you want to call it that, and, but uh, the focus is that we're uh, collaborating with other depart departments, other uh, subject areas, and creating projects, and still working collaboratively, having students do design thinking, having them do project-based learning, uh, and so all of that good work that's that iSTEM is made up of is happening already. Uh, and so by the time we open up, we're just going to be uh, off to an amazing start because we've already kind of, we've already dipped our toes. And uh, I know some teachers are very experienced in this field already. They've been doing it for years. Uh, so I think certainly we're going to be more than ready for sure. And I think to Mohammed just to add in there, we've got such a strong partnership between the two schools already um, yes. in the work that we've been doing and the goals that we're setting uh, with each other to 
to work in partnership. Um, and it, you know, my big hope is that one day um, soon we have a, an iSTEM conference for the students at, at both schools to participate in. That's something that that we're working on right now to to make happen. But uh, you know, really, like the the teachers at Elsie McGill, the teachers at Allershot, we're collaborating virtually all the right. time. And it's a lot. We, of we've got we've already met a couple of times, and so <laughs> it's happening. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, we have one last question. Uh, I'm going to send this one to Paul. Uh, so is the iSTEM program internationally recognized like the IB program? Uh, at this point, it's not. I'd like one day to think that it would be, but uh, currently, no, it is, it is a, it is a, uh, a Halton advent, let's say, and, and something that has been homegrown here with Halton. However, I will say we have been working with organizations across the province, across the region, across the country, that have helped inform the program. So word is out there about the Aldershot program. Uh, people are becoming more aware of it uh, every day. And uh, we are excited about, about the feedback we get on the program and hearing from other places that they've learned about our program. Different school boards have reached out, you know, across the province about what we're doing, how to do it. Um, so we are excited about all that. So currently it, it wouldn't hold the same, uh, uh, maybe awareness that IB would, but uh, we are certainly doing our very best to get the word out there and promoting the program because uh, we know it's a fantastic opportunity for students. It's a fantastic opportunity for staff and all of the benefits with our community as well. We're seeing so much happening. We're really excited about it and doing our best to get word out there for sure. Excellent. Thank you. I'm going to now turn things over to Rebecca Newcomb. Well, thank you everyone. That concludes our uh, questions and answers and our presentation for this evening. We hope that you now have a deeper understanding of the iSTEM program and are ready to share your amazing thinking and ideas on your application. So uh, thank you so much again. Um, a reminder that a recording of this will be on uh, the HDSB website following the event and closed captioning will be available on this recorded version. In addition, if you would like to continue to learn more, you can check out our Instagram and Twitter at iSTEM underscore HDSB and also on the HDSB website. The application uh, opens uh, later on this evening. Thank you so much and have a nice evening. <laughs>